Hey, I'm Alex, you're watching Big Al Books, and today I'm going to be talking about Père Goriot by Honoré de Balzac, an intriguing tale of obsession, fatherly love, social climbing, and greed, all set in Paris during the year 1819. I finally decided to give Honoré de Balzac a try because I heard that he was influential to a young Dostoevsky, so I was definitely looking for connections between their works. I think for the longest time I'd heard his name, I knew he was an important French writer, but I didn't really have a desire to actually read anything of his because I didn't know anything interesting about him. And he doesn't really have a lot of well-known classics to his name, so like Victor Hugo, you know, who I also know is a French important writer, but I don't really know much about him, at least has Les Mis and Hunchback of Notre Dame to his name. So I know at some point I should probably read something by this guy. But Balzac, I couldn't really list a lot of his titles. I don't think they have that name recognition that some other classics do. But I think that it's a shame that he's not more widely read. And I wish that I had known before reading it just how much fun reading Balzac was going to be. I seriously had a good time at reading this, especially I think because I was just coming off of reading Buddenbrooks by Thomas Mann, which was so long and heavy and serious. I mean, this book is the opposite of that. Like it is short, it is zippy, it's hard to put down, and it's just a lot of fun. I mean, this is a very dramatic lot set in this decrepit Paris boarding house. I know Flaubert was critical of that Balzac was amazing but he couldn't write but I really loved the description at the beginning of this of this boarding house and everything is rotting and in this state of decay and the people who live there are like desperate and there's this like peculiar smell that he describes as boarding house smell. I really thought he brought this sordid place to life. All of our main characters are living in this depressing boarding house, but the plot veers off in two different directions. So there's the King Lear plot, as well there's also the Gossip Girl plot. So for the King Lear part of the story, we're concerned with Père Goriot. I think in some translations they call him Old Goriot. Basically, he's this old guy who is like at the bottom of the food chain in this boarding house. No one respects him. They kind of make fun of him, and they don't really know what his deal is. But basically, he was once a very successful businessman, but he spent literally all of his money on his spoiled and ungrateful daughters, hence the King Lear comparison, which Balzac is kind of criticized for maybe ripping off a little bit too much. But basically, this is that story of fatherly love and at what point is giving to your kids um, going to help them or hurt them. Père Gorio is supposed to be a tragic figure, but he also comes across as a creep in a lot of ways, especially when he's comparing the role of a father to that of God and kind of sees himself as this generous, all-powerful being that is responsible for the happiness of others. So he sees his self-sacrifice as something very noble and he doesn't think about all the bad effects that come from it. As well, his obsession with his daughters is just beyond creepy. I mean, there's nothing admirable about it. You don't read this book and wish, man, I wish I had a dad that treated me as well as that. I mean, he just goes so overboard to the extent that he's kind of this parasite with no existence of his own. There's never anything that he wants to buy for himself. There's never anything that he really wants for himself. He just wants his daughters to be happy so that he can live vicariously through them. Um, which just like, please get a life, old man. Père Goriot's pathetic existence makes for the tragic King Lear part of the plot, but I was definitely more intrigued by the Gossip Girl part of the plot, which gives us a glimpse of what upper-class Parisian high society was like in the early 1800s, and believe me, it was cutthroat. 
Balzac writes about how so many people strive to belong to this upper class society, even though it's almost impossibly inaccessible unless you've been born into it. So one of our main characters, Eugène de Rastignac, comes from this country family who have put all of their money into sending him to Paris to become a doctor. And instead of focusing on his studies, he gets sucked up into some of this high society drama and he decides that he wants to belong and he learns just how much that costs. Basically, you need to look good, so you need to be spending a lot of money on clothes and accessories as well. You have to be able to keep up your gambling habit. You have to be seen at the opera and the theater. There is literally no shortage of costs. Even if you do have money, it's extremely difficult to navigate the ridiculous social norms and customs of this high society. First of all, I think every married person is having some kind of an affair, so you have to keep up with all these, you know, interpersonal connections and that gossip. And these are people who look like they're your friend on the outside, but are all kind of secretly rooting for everyone else's demise. So the people in this high class society came across as quite villainous. Eugène de Rastignac falls in love with one of these rich ladies and then becomes just so desperate to fit into this society, but he just doesn't have the funds to do so. Until one day, one of his housemates in the boarding house, who's this sketchy, mysterious guy named Vautrin, approaches him and comes up with this scheme that he has to get Rastignac in possession of a lot of money, but it involves some illegal acts, such as killing a person. So Eugene has to decide how important this money is going to be. Balzac is interested in human nature and creating these psychological portrayals of his character, so we have to wait and see what is going to win out in Eugene. What's stronger in man, the desire for money and happiness or morality and wanting to be a good person? And Vautrin is an interesting character because he does not have these morals. He is a real do-what-I-want kind of person. He he is very contemptuous of society and its values and its rules, which at first kind of impressed me with Vautrin. I mean, it's like, oh, look at this rebel. He's so cool, challenging the norms of society. But then he lost me when he started talking about how his dream in life was to move to America and own a slave plantation. And he kind of went on this rant about how slaves are like children and you can have them do whatever you want. So yeah, not necessarily someone that you want to look up to but has this philosophy of life where he thinks that the majority of people are kind of this mass, like this herd of people who don't really think deeply, and that there are some great men that are destined to rise above and to achieve their destiny, they have to break some rules. Which, if that sounds familiar, Dostoevsky definitely takes this idea and plays with it further in Crime and Punishment. I mean, that is Raskolnikov, someone who thinks that he is better than the everyday man and kind of allowed to break some rules, which is definitely a dangerous way of thinking. So yeah, the best part about this novel is definitely the drama. There is no shortage of it, and I found myself so compelled to just keep turning the pages because I really cared about what was going to happen to these people, and I just had to know how it was all going to end, and it was a very fabulous, satisfying conclusion. I also found that this had one of the greatest final sentences of a novel that I've ever read, so I'd like to share that with you, but if you're someone who wants to experience the ending for yourself, and if you don't like spoilers, maybe you shouldn't listen to this part, although it's not really a spoiler in that it tells you what goes on with the plot, but it's just a really epic last sentence, so here it is. Rastignac, now all alone, walked a few paces to the higher part of the cemetery and saw Paris spread out along the winding banks of the Seine, where the lights were beginning to shine. His eyes fastened almost hungrily on the area between the column in the Place Vendôme and the Dome of the Invalides, home to that fashionable society to which he had sought to gain admission. He gave this murmuring hive a look which seemed already to savor the sweetness to be sucked from it and pronounced the epic challenge. It's between the two of us now. And as the first shot in the war he had thus declared on society, Rastignac went to dine with Madame de Nucigen. Isn't that amazing? This novel literally ends with a character declaring war on society. 
I live for drama like this. So those were a few of my thoughts on Per Gorio. Honestly, this book was so much fun. It made me so happy and I really can't wait to dive more into French literature after reading this. So please do check it out if you haven't. If you have, let me know what you think and thanks for watching.